Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create this effect right here. And if you don't see an effect happening right here, that means I've done my job. Because what I'm doing is we're transforming summertime sort of imagery into fall time imagery, just using the tools in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, this is gonna be sort of a, I guess you could say lackluster way of doing it. It's um, a lot of just piling on the same effect over and over and doing different colors. And it isn't as powerful as if we use something like Lightroom or um, another color correction suite, like maybe DaVinci but it can still be accomplished. And someone was wondering how you could use the HSL secondary in Lumetri to accomplish this. So I thought I'd give it a shot and it came out pretty good. And you'll see that the, the colors stick to everything. And if you're using this for like a quick shot or something that isn't, you know, as, you know, really, really important to get the colors beautiful and, you know, exactly perfect, then this is actually a great way to just throw some effects in and get a cool fall look. So then let us get started. The first thing we're gonna do is what we always do, and that is just gonna create ourselves a new sec sequence to get started. Just gonna make it a default 30 frames, and we're gonna make our footage replace that sequence. So we're gonna drag in our original footage right here, change out of the sequence settings and zoom it in. And now we have our footage to work from. You can work from really any of the menus to uh, accomplish this effect, like the color, the effects, um, the color one you might think works well, but the only problem is that over here on the right, it's really hard to choose a specific Lumetri color panel and have it come up over here on the right. It only wants to do the first one and the master one. So it gets confusing and I ended up like kind of destroying some of my work. So what I do is I just go into editing and I make this effects tab really big. And then we just drag, um, some Lumetri colors onto this up here like so. And then that's how I've worked through it. So what we're gonna be doing is, the first thing we need to do is just a couple of basic corrections. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna add the first Lumetri color. I'm gonna rename this one to main, just so we have an idea of which one is which when we add like eight of these things, so we don't get confused. So we're in here, and so basically what we're gonna be doing, and anytime you scroll over this, this pops up, is creating our own lookup tree or lookup table. I always forget. Table or tree. Basically, you take a color and what it's gonna say is, so normally it reads in this data and it says, oh, that's the code for green at this exact value. That's the code for blue at this exact value. So what we're doing is we're gonna be selecting colors and saying, whenever you see green from this range to this range, turn it to a red, stuff like that. And that's how you get the effect. Let's get back into the main over here. What we're gonna do first is we're just gonna bump up the contrast just a little bit, just to correct the image. You can see it's a little bit um, flat to start off with. So we're gonna bump that up and it's gonna help out with the color a little bit too. And then we are just going to drop the exposure, maybe just one tick because, not, not that whole tick, um, like 0.1. So maybe like negative 0.1 or somewhere around there, just a slight drop. And the only reason we're doing this is because autumn light is slightly less than summer light. So we don't want this extremely intense light. We wanna drop that exposure down and make it look like autumn or fall might look like. And then what we can also do is over here in, we go down here into creative saturation. We can drop that down just a little bit. This sometimes works and it sometimes doesn't. Basically what we're doing is we're flattening the image um, color wise, and that's going to give us sort of some room to drag the colors back out in the direction that we want them to. And it also brings the colors closer together in a good way. So when we select the background, it's going to select more colors and it's going to select them easier. Yeah, so uh, you can keep it at 100% or if you're finding some things hard to select, maybe drop that down a little bit. So now we have our main going, let's actually get into color correcting or color manipulating. We're gonna first add this one and we're just gonna make this one our background one. So this is gonna like try to affect as much as possible and really change those colors. We could select the whole thing or um, even draw a mask if we wanna mask like a certain area out, like if we wanna just mask the mountains out and do something with that or just, uh, we'll sh I'll show you the mask in a little while cause we're gonna have to fix this tree right here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go into HSL secondary. I have a video on this. Um, basically what this is, is it's secondary color correction. It's not main, we're choosing a color and we're correcting that color specifically. So what we're gonna do is there is set color, add color and remove color. We're gonna grab this set color. And what we wanna do is select an element that's gonna select a good portion of this background that we can change the color of. 
These browns will be easy to change the color. Greens will be a little harder because it's such a strong color. We can only manipulate it a little bit in each direction without losing detail. If we had a stronger camera with, um, and this was all raw, so it was all like the data was saved in there, we could do a lot to change things around. And even just stronger camera, stronger lens will allow this these effects to come out better. But for right now, we're just gonna use this footage, which is on an old DSLR. So let's select this color right here. We can actually hit the control key and you see it gets just a little bit bigger. And what that does is it just selects a slightly larger area to grab the average of, because it's just gonna grab some pixels in there, average out, and that's gonna be our color. Now, what exactly did we select? Let's click this show mask button here and you can see all that we selected. And what this is, is hue, saturation, and luma. So we're going with how vibrant the color we wanna select is, where on the hue spectrum we wanna select it, and you know, shadows, mid-tones, highlights, where do we want to select that in there? And what we can do is we can move this around to sort of grab what we're looking for here. And if you turn the mask off, every time you grab this, it's gonna go back to the mask. I'm trying to look for the tops of the trees here and a little bit of the grass. And you can see that's kind of doing it right now, um, which is why I'm trying to move to the back end. If I move over, you can see it goes downward. Um, we wanted to bring it to the tops of the trees here. And then Luma, same, we wanna bring that up a little bit too because we're trying to grab these highlights. And then now we can go down in here into the correction wheel. And what we do here is this is where we're actually gonna start changing colors around. And surprisingly enough, pink doesn't look too bad. But we're gonna go with something more subtle. You don't want extremes like this because it's always gonna look bad. You wanna just change it just a little bit. Push it kind of far then bring it back just a little bit. And you'll see that we've added actually a really nice orange tint to everything, uh, just some specific things. And already some things are getting like frosted orange tips and we have an overall pretty solid um, correction going on with our first main correction. So we've got a good, you can just see the difference right here. We've added a little bit of orange in there. So let's go ahead and just go into our next one. That's what this whole thing's gonna be, is selecting and manipulating. So we just go drop right in here, we're gonna grab um, let's rename this one to still in the background. So we're going to go background green because now we're trying to affect those greens, those, those evergreens there. Now, they are evergreens, so that kind of works in our favor. We just want them to lose a little bit of their color and kind of turn a little bit more brown. So we can select that right there and let's see if we actually grab the tree. We did a pretty good job here. And what we want to do is we want to expand this. And what these do, so I forgot to explain this because it was actually pretty good on the last one. What these do is this right here is the selection. So any colors within this range, it's gonna change. Same for here, same for here. Now what the edges do is it's gonna taper this off. So it's gonna select all the colors here and then it's gonna like lower the opacity of the effect as it goes up this chain here. So you can kind of dial it in to what you want here. Um, you can see the partial gray. So if it's inside here, you're gonna get its actual color. But if it's here, you're gonna get a mixture of gray, which means it's not affecting it, and the color itself. So it's a lower opacity version. So what we wanna do is, yeah, right there, we kinda of got a good selection of the trees. Maybe drop this luma down a tad bit here. Now we definitely wanna get the trees in there. We'll see how this does. It might be selecting too much, but actually it seems to be grabbing a good amount of the green and that's good, that's good right there. So what we're gonna do is we can leave the mask on if we wanna do this to kind of see the effect without everything else. And let's drop it there. That's too similar to the other one. It looks just yellow and washed out, so. Again, purple and pink look pretty good. Okay, so we're just gonna drop it like maybe right here doesn't look like much, but it really helps sell the effect. And you'll see that it takes all that green and it turns it to a brownish color. And we can actually go back maybe into the background, go here and bump it closer to yellow. Try to offset those colors just a little bit more. And that's what this whole thing is. It's just a guessing game, some trial and error, and moving things back and forth to change the colors around. So then, the next thing that I want to do is we got kind of a fall look going here, and you'll see if we undo all of these, this is what it originally looked like. And now it's got a darkening, and we got some orange going in here. And let's go in here, and you'll see that maybe, let's drop this over a little bit more. Okay, so the next step we wanna do is we can actually specifically color correct something. So if I go into the Lumetree, I drag up one, 
go into HSL secondary. So we have this open, but let's first draw something. Let's make this tree a standing point. So what we can do is we can click and we can outline this tree. Right here, which will take a second. It always wants to rotate it. This, I don't understand that. Um, After Effects would never do that because you want to like get really accurate, but I don't know. It wants to put rotate more convenient than actually selecting things. Get a little annoying. Uh, let's actually back it. Let's go up into the bark here so that we don't change the bark color. So now we have this tree selected, and let's go ahead and just move the feathery out. 10, actually, it's 10, 15, pretty good. And so then inside the tree, we can actually select something, show the mask, and you'll see that all we are doing is selecting the tree. So if we drag this forward a little bit, move this around, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find most of the tree here. We're going to expand that out to grab the majority of it. Maybe even open that up a little bit. Open this up a little bit. And let's just see what we do if we turn this red. See, it looks a little intense because we don't have the shadows changing enough colors here. Because what we want is as much of the tree as possible. I also want to feather this a little bit more. And then we can work on, you know, refining that um, mask there. And then we can actually do a little bit less of an intense one. And right about there. Now, because we're the ones who drew the mask, we can really see the edges. But if this is just a quick scene being dropped in, people minds will correct it for them and they'll just kind of look at the landscape itself and we can kind of you know go back in here and edit some things around and you know make some maybe the background a little bit more intense so that um yeah like maybe bring it over here a little bit so that it distracts you from the front and that's really the strong as strong as we're going to be able to get in adobe premiere just because we don't have those tools like we might in lightroom but yeah, so you can keep going like this, grabbing different colors, and then slowly changing them over time, going back into your effects, and then just moving stuff around until you have something that you really like. But that is really the essence of this effect. It's just, like I keep saying, is this effect here. And that is really how you do it. Um... Thanks everyone for joining me for this tutorial. Let's check out. Let's take a quick look and see how it compared to the original. And the, the funny thing is, is you might have to do this a few times to get it right. Like we see, this one came out a little bit brighter, and maybe the colors are a little bit different. And that's just all because I manipulated this in a lot of different ways. And it took me about five tries to get it right. I had to keep scratching and starting over, scratching and starting over. And that's what you will probably have to do if you want to do this level of detailed correction, is you're going to have to scrap it, start over, scrap it, start over, and keep working at that until you get something that you really like. Just because of how many variables there are in this, how where your mask selects, how deep it selects, what areas you want to select, stuff like that. So each time it's going to kind of come out a little bit differently. But if you keep working at it, eventually you'll come out with something that looks pretty good and then that you can use in your footage. Thanks everyone for joining me for this tutorial. Um, if you want to see more Adobe Reddit content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you want to you know, drop any comments or you know, suggestions for future tutorials, throw those in the comments below. I'll be happy to respond or make tutorials like this one was inspired by. Thanks everyone and until next time, see ya.